Hello everyone, my name is Alice Bull and I run the membership group at scraphappy.org. I'm so happy to be scrapbooking with you today. We are going to be playing with an amazing kit. I peaked, I peaked, oh my gosh, I peaked. Um, it's an amazing kit from the Scrap Room and you can get information about their kits at scrap-room.com. And I'm really excited to use that. Um, we also, uh, we'll be giving away a free kit from the scrap room. So I pay for my kit just in all, you know, um, clarity up front or whatever. Um, I pay for my own kits from the scrap room. I do get them a little earlier so that I have them in time to be able to share them with you. And um, it's the current month's kit. This is the January one. This is the flavors of the month kit. So they have a couple different types of kits. This is the flavors of the month. And I also get an add-on embellishment pack. So extra fun things for me to play with. So I'm going to show you what's in my kit. We're going to scrapbook. We're going to chat. We're going to, you know, do all the things and yeah, just spend some time scrapbooking together. So welcome everyone. And so we have here the kit. Let me spin this around and hope that it's working the way it's supposed to. <laughs> Let's just say there's been a few issues this morning. <laughs> okay, better than I thought. <laughs> it was not cooperative today. Okay, let's. <laughs> yeah, mount is all messed up. There we go. That's probably as good as she's gonna get. Let's see if we can put a little more light on the situation. Okay, a little better perhaps. Okay, well, let's take a peek at this kit. So the flavors of the month kits have four mini kits in them. We've got four little kits. And as we go, I'll open up and uh, show you the different um, embellishments extras. So every kit has its own embellishments. So first off in here, let's just set these aside. Um, oh, it's doing the thing. Um, yeah, so first off in here is doodle bug papers. Now I really like this top paper a lot. Um, just the yellow color is kind of that perfect shade of yellow. It's not too bright and it's, um, yeah, and it's not too pastel either. It's kind of that something in the middle. Um, they've got a yellow doily in here for embellishment. So that's really fun. Um, it's almost orangey yellow. And then in here, the included embellishments also have several little die cut pieces. Oh, and I see there's some little enamel pieces as well. Look how cute those little enamel pieces are. The little bear, hedgehog, and some fish. <laughs> so fun. So definitely a outdoorsy kit or something. Oh yeah, adventure awaits and we've got some fun little pieces. So yeah, this looks like a nice kit. So the great outdoors, let's uh, see what else we got. Oh, nice plaid paper. Doodlebug does some pretty plaids. Uh, great outdoors with the polka dots, fun polka dots. And then we have just a regular kind of green, simple background, a nice blue, simple paper. Ooh, and then a stripey cut apart sheet or potential cut apart sheet. And then there's two sheets of um, white cardstock to go with that. So this is kind of fun, fun papers. So if I'm looking at all of the, the busy kind of papers together, that's a lot of fun. And then the more simple, although is that plaid simple? Not with that many colors, right? <laughs> I don't know, the other side had the, the flowers. So that one really doesn't really have a super simple, but this will be a great um, embellishment to go with this pack. And if you look, so if that's too much of this for you, you know, you, you tone it down by using small layers. That diagonal stripe that's in there is so good for doing edging around pages. It's nice to have a little piece of it that reaches across your page on a little strip. So it's not as scary as you think. 
Um, in my extra embellishment pack here, so this is an extra add-on that you buy separately. And um, for me, it's just something else that's fun to get. So um, this gave, they gave me a whole roll of this washi tape. It says campfire plaid. So it's just a plaid design and it is 12 yards. So plenty of washi tape <laughs> for me to hoard on my shelf behind me. <laughs> because let's be real, that's what happens with washi tape, but we love it. Um, so yeah, that's the first of the little mini kits that's in here from the scrap room. And then let's take a peek at this next one. This one here is from Photoplay and it is, oh, did I tell you what that last one's called? It's called Great Outdoors. Um, this one is from Photoplay and it is called Notting Hill Bookstore. Fun. <laughs> Okay, it's a Notting Hill bookstore. So my embellishments is this whole 12 by 12 sheet of stickers. So that's a fun amount of embellishments right there. I, I like their stickers because, because they're on these kind of thicker, they're not super thick, right? It's still paper, but they're mm, a little bit of a heavier weight. I really don't like, okay, so call me a sticker snob if you wish, but I hate stickers that are too thin. And I just don't like using them. I don't like peeling them off. They get all wrinkly when you're handling them. I just hate stickers that are too thin, but these are nice. <laughs> so what a play does it right. Oh, pretty papers. Okay, this is a funky color collection, guys. So we've got uh, some limeish green, and then we've got a little bit of teal and some navy with little hits of red in here. And it's all about reading. So read, this is my fave book. I like what they did there. So anybody that is Canadian or maybe from the UK or somewhere that came from the UK might also have the struggle that I have with the word favorite because in the United States of America, you guys don't like all those U's that we like to spell things with. So words like favorite and color can be it feels like I'm spelling wrong on my page. And I was not the kid that spelled things wrong. I did really good on my spelling test. So I have a hard time putting those onto my layout. So this is my favorite book. I'm okay to use that because it's just shortened. So, you know, uh, I thought that was pretty great. <laughs> uh, yeah, so lots of fun things. I'd rather be reading Book Lover, just one more chapter. I'm booked. <laughs> bookworm please go away I'm reading book hangover readers gonna read I read past my bedtime I do not want to just read books I want to climb inside them and live there <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah they did that good this is a, a Becky Moore collection and her stuff is so good guys so good I've had the um, pleasure of meeting her at creativation and I tell you she's wonderful Okay, so we have this book nerd with the polka dots. And these are like a larger polka dot. So that's kind of fun. And then there's a cool design, just, you know, geometric graphic, whatever. Okay, let's let, let read just, I'll try to not do that so much. I tried to get the settings to turn off and they wouldn't turn off today. I'm like, stop the autofocus. Um, green, just uh, graph paper. And then, ooh, nice kind of fun, funky floral on the back. Let's talk about that. And then we've got this um, nice grid, ooh, fun. And then just uh, navy with lots of little writing. And it says like, by the time the season drew to its end, they had seen a good deal of one another. It's, it's like lines from some kind of book or story or something. Um, there's a couple sheets of um, navy cardstock, but look at this floral. This is an interesting one. They've kind of used different little floral pieces to make these butterflies. It's a fun little butterfly effect, but yeah, they're not really drawn like a butterfly. They have just little floral pieces, which is neat. There's lots of little long pieces in here. So you see a lot of vertical elements in this. That's a really interesting floral. Do you like it or is it like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I'm curious what you think of that. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Uh, yeah, 
is Alice freezing for others to stay in? Yeah, it's cold here. Mar Marcia's here and she's from Red Deer. So yeah, she, she knows it's, we've been having so much cold weather. <laughs> Dad, I hadn't seen that. She said, do you mean world? And she added an extra U in the world, word world. <laughs> yes, we don't spell like that. <laughs> okay, so fun that papers, those are kind of like the crazy ones and extra fun. And then some really nice neutrals to work with too, right? You need a little bit of that neutral, otherwise you can't really make the fun stuff pop. Um, as for a bonus embellishment in the embellishment pack, let's see what we got in here. This one, ooh, it has some different little die cut pieces. So there's some that are on sheets here. And these look like they're an assortment. So when they have, when they package things up, um, either with the embellishments that come in the kit or the ones that you order separate, you kind of get a little mixture. You might not get everything. Bookaholic, <laughs> I'm a bookaholic. I love it, so Shannon. <laughs> uh, so we've got from the library of so many books, so little time, really cute. I'm a bookaholic and let's see. So yeah, you may not get this exact same mixture of little die cut pieces, but you'll get part of a die cut pack if that makes sense. Books are uniquely portable magic from Stephen King. A little heart in here and I got a little thing. A book is a dream you hold in your hands. Very much true. Oh my gosh, that's a good one. Okay, well that's fun. I need a picture of me reading a book or me to make a page about some of my favorite books that I've read. I think it'd be fun if I just made a list of all of my childhood favorite books, but that would be somewhat challenging because there's a lot. <laughs> I was a voracious reader as a kid. <laughs> Uh, okay, so this next kit is from Simple Stories. It's called Hearth and Home. It has like this kind of very neutrally um, rustic, maybe fallish kind of color palette from the look of it. We got kind of like a mustardy and kind of a rusty orange color with this floral. I don't love this floral, but I don't hate it. It's like, okay, it's nice. And then, oh, I like this paper though on the back, that black and white floral. Got a really nice uh, check paper. Oh, with some little lemons on the back. Fun. And then we've got some little kitchen setup. That'd be good. I don't think I do enough kitchen scrapbooking stuff. It looks very 70s, this Shannon. Yeah, yeah, the colors are like, woo. <laughs> I'm pretty sure my mom still has Tupperware that matches this paper. <laughs> it is the stuff I grew up on. And now all other Tupperware says, what are they trying to do? Are they trying to pretend that that's real Tupperware? Tupperware doesn't come in like pinks and teals. No, it comes in yellows and ugly green. <laughs> but it's so funny because my whole life, I thought that was ugly green. And now I'm a grown up. I'm like, oh, well, avocado green really isn't that bad. <laughs> How does that happen? Um, so I've got a variety of little pieces that are included. So you can see they've given me some enamel dots. They've given me part of one of the sheets with uh, different embellishment things. I've got the word family, stay a while, live well, laugh often, and a couple little embellishments. These are really puffy. So you can see how thick they are. I love these so much. Yeah, it was in appliances too. Oh yeah. <laughs> The first house that Jonas and I lived in, every appliance in our kitchen was a different color. <laughs> and I think only the dryer was white. <laughs> so, so there you go. Yeah, it was really pretty in there. <laughs> I had my own little kitchen rainbow. So yeah, I've got some little die cut pieces. Yeah, just a little fun embellishment with a little bench. So nice. Just a really fun thing. The papers in this one are gray. They're basil oh, thunder. Yeah, basil thunder. There we go. For anybody that knows basil, is there anybody here that's like really good at that and they actually know the basil colors and you're like, oh yeah, I love that. Because <laughs> I'm so not that person. Um, 
was my heart colors. I was really good with those. Avocado green and harvest yellow. I knew that I was looking for a word. <laughs> but that, yeah, these papers are nice. Very um, fun to play with and fairly neutral. Like I know there's lots of this, like this is quite not neutral, but you could definitely do a pretty neutral looking page with this. So whatever topic, you know, if the words don't match, you know, it wouldn't be a big deal. Um, you can put other stuff with it. Uh, in my add-on embellishment kit, I have a whole package here of page pieces. So I think that the design behind this is to actually build yourself a page. They've given you everything. You can do this page if you want, or just do your own thing. But if you want something fast and simple, Simple Stories has actually done a really good job at putting some of that kind of stuff together for you. Okay. And here we go. There's one on the bottom of the pile. We still have one more mini kit. And I know I've been talking about this forever, but I have new scrapbook stuff to play with. So I get really excited to see it. Now, I've seen this kit a little bit, but I almost looked away because I hadn't ordered it. So as I was looking away, I accidentally saw some of this, but this is the Vicki Booten Fernwood collection. Anybody that hasn't seen this yet, you're gonna love this, <laughs> or maybe not, but <laughs> I'm gonna love this. So let's take a look at this together. We'll set the embellishments aside. Just look at this paper for starters. Anybody here that thinks mixed media is hard or messy, it is sometimes, right? This is done for you. This looks like you did all the work. It is so pretty. She got it just right. And then I don't have to do the work and mess it up, but I love it. And it's just got like simple text in the background, but honestly, unless maybe I was used to reading old English Heather, you hear, <laughs> like, yeah, I can't read this at all. There's not enough letters kind of for me to, to read. So it's very nondescript. You're not going to be looking at that and say, well, it's talking about, you know, boats and I'm not doing a boat page. It's, it's not like that. So Anyways, very nice. Pre-done mixed media for you. Deborah says, I just ordered the Fernwood collection. I broke down. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> it's so pretty. Um, yeah, Lindsay says, I used to know most of the close to my heart colors by look, and now it's the, is it Tim Holtz ones? Is that what that is? They used tend to know. Double-sided papers give you anxiety. So Shannon, no, they're beautiful. Deborah says she ordered the Fernwood. Heather says she used Fernwood. Oh, she used Fernwood last night on her live. Yeah. Oh, and look at this stripe. Okay, how often do we get a stripe that is that tiny? My camera almost doesn't like it, right? It's almost like um, not camera friendly, but it's friendly to your eye. When you're looking at it in person, you're not getting that overwhelming camera look. You know how there's certain things that camera people don't wear. One of them is green for their green screen so they don't become a floating head. Some Another one is striped but they're too small because it can look really bad on some camera. Yeah. Uh, love the watercolor papers says Marcia no mess plus it's not buckled and that's what bugs me most yeah so you get all the fun of the watercolor without the texture <laughs> the texture that you start to love right or not even this polka dot paper right it has that kind of slightly distressed look in the background and I was there for distressing round one like this is definitely distressing round two that we've seen come around right now but this doesn't feel overly distressed to me so even though you know whether you're super on the distressed or not uh <laughs> i i think you'll you'll still have fun or or not and you'd be like i really liked that other collection alice that's fine that's this is a nice little taste of things um yeah look at this this is fun oh there's like little botanical little birds butterflies mm, she's pulling from all of the things with her fern wood collection um and then we've got some words in the background of this paper this is a really nice color it is green teal green teal <laughs> i don't know <laughs> It doesn't feel teal and it doesn't feel green. It is green and teal. 
Um, it's called Wonderful Things, and it has things like happiness, begin anywhere, capture the moment, one of a kind day like this, strong mind life. I don't know, it has a bunch of words. Oh, look at this. Ooh, good for mountains, good for boys, just good for lots of things. You know, and obviously not just boys, but it's really fun. Oh, Heather says she's here. She says send a picture, she'll translate it. <laughs> I don't know. It's nondescript. <laughs> but two sheets of white cardstock. And then in here we also have uh some embellishments. Ooh, I got a real um, mix match of embellishments in here. So there's die cut pieces and some of them have foil and uh, are on vellum. So that's fun. And yeah, different styles. There's a few. This is actually, this is stuck to this. It's supposed to be stuck to that. So there's layered embellishments in here. Oh yeah, it's a little butterfly on a flower. He just pulled his little wings up. Oh, cute. And so that's a pre-made embellishment ready to go. And yeah, interesting little textures, little edging and stuff. Mushrooms. And then we've got, um, ooh. So this is part of one of their um, chipboard stickers that they have. And obviously you get like a full sheet if you order the whole thing, or maybe even two sheets in one of these packs. And I've got a part of one. So I got the part that has the cute little houses. It has some little sayings. This is our happy place. Wake up with a purpose. Oh, that's a good one for starting 2022. <laughs> Such a great day. Life documented, strong-minded, loving every minute. So yeah, some really fun embellishments in the pack. And then also... I have here some my extras. So this is, it looks like it is um, one of two. So it probably came as a pack of two. And um, in my embellishment pack, I got half of the pack. So I got this whole sheet here of words. I really like these words a lot. Um, I tend to use them very well on my pages. So I was pretty excited to see this in here. Okay, well, that means it's time to kick this off. Um, I want to kick this off. I miss. I dump it out somewhere. Oh, so. Okay. All right. Also, in the packs, there is um, a little coffee sample. You can choose not to get it, but opening up my pack of, of scrapbook supplies and smelling that coffee. It smells amazing. Even if you don't drink coffee, I think I love the smell of it. This is January kit, Deborah. And uh, the, the coffee in here is caramel flan. Mm. It smells really good. I wish I'd made that now. <laughs> now I wish I'd made it. You also get some information in your kit with um, their Freaky Fast Friday formula. They've got their January sketch in here and it kind of gives you a rundown of all of the pieces that you'll find in your kit. So that's what's going on. I've got this kit. My picture that I have is printed of me. And while I was actually working when I was in Hawaii, I did some work. So, you know, I did do some work, but mostly I just relaxed and went to the beach. <laughs> But this is a working picture and I thought this is really good. I'm really tempted to just dive right in and use this top paper because it was just so fun. And look, my glass is pink, right? So obviously it's made for this. There's pink. <laughs> uh, Deborah says not to get, get it. I don't drink coffee and I love it. I know, just that little tiny little bit. And it smells so good. Uh, and he says, I don't get the coffee. So I like the smell of the non-coffee smelling paper. It reminds me of college when I worked in the book bindery at our university. Uh, uh, it's not instant. I use carry mark. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not instant coffee. It's, it's actual like real coffee grounds. And you could put them into one of the little things if you use like a, a single cup maker. 
I have a single cup maker that is a Keurig, but I actually use my single cup maker that's not a Keurig more because then I don't have to deal with all the little cups. I just throw my little scoop in the basket and wash it out. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, well, I'm gonna play with this paper. I'm excited. I wanna just do something really simple and fun on here, I think. I think we're gonna start right there. So everything is out. I, I've been kind of waiting to play with this paper. So I was really excited to see it in here. And I think that's one of the things I love about getting a kit is just, you don't know what you're going to get. And you're kind of sitting there like, ooh, what's going to come this month? And throughout the year, I get to play with 48 kits. Well, you know, that's 48 different types of paper that come here and I can play with. Do I use every single one? No, no, not, not at all. I don't use every single one. But I use enough that it's, um, it's, I think it's worth it. If I was uh, even a more prolific scrapbooker, I would do better about using it. But it turns out I still shop for my own stuff. Why? Because, you know, I'm waiting right now on an order and it is killing me <laughs> to wait. <laughs> killing me is, <laughs> it's killing me to wait. I've been waiting for a while. So this paper is actually not um, not a textured basil. It's actually a flat basil. That'd be good for stamping and stuff too. I'm gonna just cut a little, um, it's called fig swirl. It's almost white. Now I'm looking at this almost white. I'm not loving almost white with this. <laughs> I want white paper, so I'm gonna grab white. And I get why they would go to almost white because none of this is super white. You can see white on the actual brand strip. And so you can see it stands out a lot off of the papers, but I don't know. It just looks dirty. <laughs> I'd rather just put white with it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to map this picture and stick this on here. I'm going to add some little words and doodads. It's probably going to be a really fast page because I don't think I'm going to do a bunch of other stuff. Oh, strength though. Okay. There. Uh, <laughs> Beth says that's the one thing I don't like about Vicky Booten lines. I wish the whites were whiter. <laughs> yeah. Let's just say like when it comes to white versus cream discussion, I'm that person that just can't get over it. <laughs> I'm like, do you mix white and cream? No, no, you don't. Unless the cream is like yellowy, right? If you're mixing white and yellow, that would be okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> white and cream, no. Oh, look at this. I thought I replaced this trimmer edge. And it's leaving little bits. That's not very nice. Maybe this isn't the one that I replaced. I do have another trimmer sitting around here somewhere. Uh, yeah. Oh, who said that? Deborah says she, I get three cups out of the sample, but I'm not a coffee drinker. It might be too weak for real drinkers. If you wanted three cups, I'd be mixing that with other coffee <laughs> just to get the flavor. <laughs> This is a little bit like it's small <laughs> and I have coffee flavored milk. <laughs> I, uh, when I started drinking coffee, I had coffee flavored sugar. <laughs> it was um, very loaded with sugar. And now I don't take any sugar in coffee, but I do toss just like a little bit of cream or milk into it. I kind of prefer milk, but my body doesn't prefer milk. So I've gone to cream. <laughs> milk and I are not best friends. Oh, okay. I need a little bit of... Oh, yes. Okay. 
Okay, let's get this going. I've got these nice circles. Let's see if I can use some of those too. If I don't use this part with flower, maybe I'll sneak that flower onto here. Let's see. Okay. I need a little bit of this. How much do I want? Okay, I'll just kind of strip off. I really do like that she has um, usable cutoff strips. So here's the two that I've cut off right now, right? And they're actually something that you could use as a strip on your page. Some of the companies do the usable cutoff strips and some don't. And I have to say, I'm in favor of them. I really like that. Lindsay says, my mom just finished a quilt virtual event. The topper was made with a lot of white, but the backing fabric is mostly cream. It's nice, but not the mix we would have chosen. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'd have been having a hard time with that one. <laughs> oh, let's here. I'll just cut it this wide in between my... my uh... Oh. This is Canada on it. It's a different country. Oh, there is. This is Canada and the United States. You can kind of see part of it's cut off. And now I'm curious. This one says something about the Eastern Central of the Gulf of Mexico. Oh, they're like little botanical references or um, bird references. Oh, and butterflies. So they're actually talking about different um, thing. Oh, okay, that's fun. So it's like the little write-ups about the little things. Interesting. Yeah, that's too tall. So I need it to go. I don't know if I'm gonna take this background paper is too much. I'm gonna just cut out a couple of these circles though, I think, and just kind of to decorate a couple of those on here. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, let's see. That's too tall. I'm gonna just do it. Okay. And focus. <laughs> this life. That was definitely a this life moment. Okay, and then I need some little doodads, so let's pull those back out. With lots of words and stuff, and oh there, this little layered butterfly needs to go onto here, right? Do something for you today. It's an interesting little card. Make today count a little tag bit and a little flower bit. So I'm going to pull those and keep those other ones handy. I really feel like I'm going to need to frame this page in a little bit. So we'll see here. I just, it feels too open for me. Uh, I'm going to just take my really fine. 10. This is my point one. This is a Copic multi-liner. They're pens that don't bleed at all. And you can use them with Copics. You can use them with watercolor. You can use them with anything. And they don't bleed at all. Like at all. That's the part that's important at all. <laughs> and so I'm actually going to just draw a little sketchy line around this page. It just feels already like I need to close it off. I, I'm just guess I'm not good at leaving the ones that are like white all around the edge and have this little floaty thing in the middle. It feels, I don't know, I love the paper, but that feels strange to me. So, and this paper or this pen is super fine tip. So, point one is really tiny. So, for me, obviously going around it one time isn't going to feel like a lot, but I'm going to go around it a few times. And you'll notice that. I'm not really good at it, but I find that 
that's part of the charm of doing a sketchy line. You don't have to be good at it. In fact, being good at it makes it not as sketchy. So I, I feel that's better. So I'm gonna just put that in there. And then to kind of give it a little more texture, I have this little tool that is hiding. Okay, now it's really hiding. I was cleaning up my room. It didn't get there all the way. So now I'm in the middle. You know how they say it gets worse before it gets better? It got worse and didn't get better. So, yeah, <laughs> that's real life here. Um, Christy Ray Powell used to say you add more than one line because one drunk line looks better by its drunk friend. <laughs> oh my God, she was so funny. <laughs> Oh, yeah. The scrapbooking world lost a good one with her. Okay, so I'm just taking the edge of my scissors and somewhat, somewhat carefully, because I don't want to stab myself. <laughs> I'm, uh, distressing up the edge of this paper. So let's just add a little bit of texture as I put it onto this other paper. There is a distressing tool. It looks like a little round disc and it has little flower-like indents around the disc and it has a little blade in the center of it and you can use that for edge distressing. But, oh, what did Claire say? Uh, oh, I think I missed something. <laughs> uh, the tool I'm always losing or hiding on myself. I, his stuff, you know, it happens, especially in here. So I did buy myself something here recently. I don't know if I can show you, but I'll, 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 I'll drag it over. I can show you if I drag it over. My mom ended up getting herself a puppy. Now that sounds like a normal thing that people do, right? Not for my mom. When she sent me this picture of her puppy, I said, whose dog is that? She says, it's mine. I'm like, yeah, but who's like, are you babysitting a dog? Who's dog are you babysitting? Like, apparently both of my brothers thought the same thing. <laughs> both of my brothers thought the same thing. Uh, so yeah, pretty funny. Uh, Cause she's just not really that dog person. Not that dog person, but yeah. She says it's her COVID pet. <laughs> So yeah, there's that. Anyways, we, uh, she showed me her cute little dog. It's a German short hair pointer and it's adorable. It is so cute. It has the softest little velvety ears ever. And uh, yeah, lots of fun. But then I was kind of feeling left out in the pet department. <laughs> so can I bring this in here? Is it gonna come? <laughs> I got myself a beta fish. <laughs> it's in here somewhere. Come on, Jingle. <laughs> I got myself a fishy and it's so cute. And I'm keeping it just here so I have a little companion in my scrapbook room. You can come on up here and eat. Anyways, yeah, I got myself a fish. I know that's not the same as getting a dog, but you know, this is way easier to take care of than a dog. And it hasn't pooped in my living room floor even once. <laughs> so yeah, I got myself my little, my little pet too. And of course, you know what happens when you get a pet, like a fish, 
you think, geez, that's really fun. Maybe I should get another one. <laughs> and so now we're looking at maybe getting a bigger fish tank. I won't be able to drag that one around. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so the things are happening. It's like, what on earth? I was trying to be like so good, but no, it's things are happening. Okay. Right. Um, my title. Okay, let's stick this down. Let's do that. Let's stick some stuff down. Uh, do you not have 25 chickens? I have 14 chickens, which, you know, they're outside and I do go out there and we take care of them. But let's just say I'm a better, better at visiting with my chickens when it's not minus whatever. <laughs> <laughs> when it's not minus whatever it is outside, you know, it's, and we heat their thing a little bit, not, not above freezing because it just causes more issues, but we do heat their, their area, their coop, and, and I can still check them on my cameras, but we're a lot more friendly in the summer, let's just say me and my chickens. <laughs> so. Yes, right now it's kind of about the fish. And yeah, just so much easier than a dog. I get it, she can cuddle. Okay, so no, <laughs> my mom, who is the person <laughs> that, that uh, you know, she was kind of an anti-dog person. My brother and I reminded her of the one dog that we could remember from our childhood. She's like, I don't remember that. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> it's because it's in the last long, mom. Yeah. Well, the one night it didn't want to go to sleep. So it was whining <laughs> in her kitchen. She keeps it in the kitchen. And so it was lonely. So she went and she laid on the floor in the kitchen next to her dog. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm not only like falling over in shock, but here she is laying on the floor. You know, she's got a linoleum floor. <laughs> it's not exactly comfy. Oh my goodness. So yeah, that's been, that's been interesting. <laughs> Now you can't eat that fish like chicken. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, Debbie, absolutely no eating of the fish, <laughs> but it might need some friends. And so we're looking at a bigger tank and oh my gosh, I had a fish tank when I was a kid and I loved having fish tank. That was like, I was in bring it on kind of thing. And then, uh, you know, it got gross. And then eventually you don't have a fish tank anymore. We tried a fish tank once with my kids. Betas don't have friends. Well, not other betas. They can have some other friends. You can do, um, there's certain little tank mates that they can have that aren't, aren't a big problem. So, but yes, not, not other beta friends. <laughs> that, won't, that won't be good. <laughs> But that's okay. And what we got here. Um, anybody ever use these like a little clip like that? I like never ever do. I think <laughs> I'm looking at this now thinking, am I gonna do that? I could try it for once. That would be interesting. Uh what we got here. Let's so go here. Also, I have these little doodads. Um, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, if you hold a mirror up, it'll push its gills out like a velociraptor, but that might be mean. They actually make beta exercising mirrors that you can kind of clip in there for a few minutes to give them exercise <laughs> to, to entertain them or something. I'm like, um, so you're like gonna make them 
angry on purpose. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and apparently these fish, like they lived in puddles. They're puddle fish. They lived in little puddles and rice patties or something. And uh, then there's all the people. So if you get one of these fish and you start looking up care of a beta fish, there are all the people that are really telling you how to take care of a fish and that you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> so there's this big thing because, you know, when you buy a beta fish, you can get them at the fish store and they're, they're in like a little tiny cup. Like I've actually seen them in little tiny plastic cups, like the ones you give to a little kid. <laughs> or something I don't know I've seen them in those in pet stores before and I'm like oh that's little um but yeah they uh just be apparently just because they can live like that doesn't mean they should live like that and so there's a lot of people online that uh encourage you to have them live differently <laughs> so yeah uh, very passionate. <laughs> uh, Vicky says, one of our kids won a goldfish at a school carnival and we ended up buying a big fish tank, more fish and all the fixings, a small fortune and all the fish ended up dying. <laughs> Didn't do that again. It sounds like a very fish thing to do. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot right now, this little tank that I have, it's one and a half gallons, which is I guess on the smallish side for a beta fish, but, um, or what people are recommending online for a beta fish, but it, um, it's a very manageable level. I did go out and buy a heater because, you know, they said that the fish like to be warmer than room temperature. And I thought, well, so do I. <laughs> so, so I just couldn't imagine letting the poor little guy freeze. So. Okay, so this is looking like it's coming good. I need a little something that goes like this. Um, so can I do one of these other ones? <laughs> this is picture this. <laughs> I'm having a little Sophia moment. Although, oh my gosh, you guys, Betty White, <laughs> Betty White, oh my gosh. Uh, I saw the news the other day about Betty White and I just thought, well, what is this world? <laughs> like, what is this world? <laughs> like, really, Betty White? And, and now all the newspapers and like all the magazines are coming out to the newsstands and it's all like Betty White's 100th birthday. Yay, Betty White, 100 years. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> because, yeah, that didn't quite happen. Oof. So, yeah, that was awful. But last year, we did a load challenge that was inspired by the Golden Girls. And I got to really deep dive into stuff about the Golden Girls. And while I did that, I ended up deep diving into Betty White. <laughs> and there was one point where I considered changing it from a Golden Girls load to a Betty White load because I felt like, oh, look, we're doing another Betty White prompt. Oh, look, we're doing another Betty White prompt. <laughs> she was just so great. <laughs> So that, um, I didn't change it, you know, I kept it together and it was, it was fine. Uh, no, I don't think. Um, okay. Ooh, this one says wake up with a purpose and I'm working here. So that like totally makes sense. Anybody else like their word strips to kind of make sense to them? And then, um, Fall asleep with a dream. Wake up with a purpose, fall asleep with a dream. Ooh, that's good. So it's getting to be deep stuff here. Oh, you can't see this one if I put it there. Eh. 
I have eyeballs, I can see it, right? Good enough. Okay, stick it on there. It's more like hiding, but that's okay. Okay, um, big words. We're at this point, we're almost there. Um, Deborah says, I saw a meme of St. Peter telling her she lived a great life and left a legacy to die at 99 and everyone thinks it was too soon. <laughs> I know. Um, Shannon says, I'm not Jewish, but I work in a Jewish school and it's been determined that according to her Hebrew birthday, she did reach 100. <laughs> Deborah says, uh, Lifetime Television played nothing but Golden Girls this week. And uh, Shannon wants to show a picture of what she made for coworkers about the Golden Girls. Yes, yes. Okay, so I'm going to add a spotlight. Can you unmute? There we go. Hello. Oh. Hi. So here is the mini version. It's just a mini canvas, but it's all of them. And my husband had to fill it in with the you know, the background that looks like the wallpaper from them. And it says, picture it, heaven, December 31st, 2021. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to get crying, you guys. <laughs> I, I love them. I'm the one that was squealing when you announced Golden Girls. <laughs> I may have heard two little squeals, but definitely. <laughs> I love it so much. Thank you so much for sharing. I'll, uh this back. Um, my friend Jacqueline from Scrap Happy, she had sent me this card when we did our Golden Girls. And it is just so cute. It has all four of the girls. There's some cheesecake on the top. And it says, girl, you're golden. <laughs> I just thought it was so great. And if you look at this background, it is like golden, shiny paper. Like there you go. You can see some of that glimmer in it. Oh, and she colored all of the little characters. Oh, I know. And it folds down flat so that you can mail it. And then it pops up and sits on your counter. So I have that sitting on the counter behind me. <laughs> I love the card. Is it die cut for the base? Uh, I'm not sure. It just looks like she's folded the pieces, but knowing how to fold them. So there's a, there's a cube here and there's a cube here. And then this is a long version. So like more like a rectangular cube shape, whatever that is. <laughs> I'm like, geometry is failing me now. Um, these, I believe that the stamp images are from kindred spirits. But kindred stamps, I mean, I always think kindred spirits. Kindred stamps, possibly. Um, also, there were two Golden Girls stamp sets that came out through ink road stamps and so anybody that is a little um feeling a little golden girl love right now this is one i feel like i would need a tutorial yeah well how about after we finish this we try to see if we can recreate this should we try that <laughs> should, should we play i know that's like you know out there and trying something different, but you know, it sounds fun. So I'll uh, leave some of this white space down here for some journaling. That's kind of my goal there. If I need to, I might toss a little bit of um, uh, vellum paper over top if I need that I find that it's gonna look a little bit too weird having the journaling too far away. But I like to do that a lot, just use a little bit of vellum. Okay, so this like okay. I'm gonna do kind of like a two part title, well, like two titles, I guess. <laughs> I think it was Scrap Addicts that showed the tutorial for the cube card that I learned from. She might have learned from them too, actually. I think it was, it's really cute, like the way that it works. So. And I would totally, if we play with it, it's me just making stuff up, but I have dimensions. I can measure it. It's called a triple pop-up cube card. Oh, Vincene. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and a lot of us have made them. Google it on YouTube. Okay. Triple pop-up cube card. Look at us getting all the info. Okay. 
So these on here. Yeah. <laughs> this did not stick. <laughs> it is chipboard from American Crafts. Well, <laughs> it stuck over the picture. And this one stuck because it's also well, mostly stuck. Okay, we're gonna add extra adhesive. <laughs> but go nuts trying to figure it out on your own. Oh, well, I have a sample. I have a sample. I can, you can do anything from a sample, right? <laughs> Ooh, maybe I'll move this one up a little bit more and the other one down since uh, they're not stuck. Ooh. So I keep, this is my um, liquid adhesive that I like to use. It's liquid glass. It's from close to my heart because I used to be a consultant a million years ago and some of their products you just get so used to using. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that you shared that with us because now we can search it up and find like real instructions from people that know what they're doing already. <laughs> uh, and I didn't know that you were a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I don't uh, order from Stampin' Up! that often, but sometimes, you know, I, it's, uh, sometimes they just have stuff that is so good. <laughs> One thing I'm sad, and you can let me know, I think they stopped making their 12 by 12 cardstock, like black cardstock, is that correct? So I got caught in the middle of is life instead of this life. <laughs> um, better to stick those chipboard things down right away than let them um, go loose into your page protector and have the stuff fall off. Cause you know, what's going to happen. It's going to fall off and it's going to float around until it finds your photo and sticks right across your photo. Cause that's where they stick. That's the only place they stick really good. <laughs> and, and I'm not going to tell you how I know that that's exactly what happens, <laughs> but that's exactly what happens. <laughs> okay. So this. This life should be, is the one that I want. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe I'm not gonna do another piece. I'm gonna leave that for now. I, I like this where it's at and this feels it's a little over too much. I'm gonna move that over just a little bit. Now that I've seen my I love it when they give me a little bit of wiggle room so that I can change my mind. <laughs> okay, well, we've got some little things done. And I'm ready to add some journaling to it. I may add little doodads when I finish the page with the journaling, because sometimes you put the journaling, you're like, oh, it just needs a little, <laughs> and then it's done. <laughs> so that's good. All of this can go back into the bag. And we can do a draw. Okay. So there we go. I had actually missed that. I hadn't gotten an email from our October winner. And when um, Rochelle from the scrap room let me know that I still had it, I was. I went back into the video and I'm like, okay, who was it? And so I found the winner. She was actually a Scrap Happy member. So I was able to go and message her. So if you're not a Scrap Happy member, you better email me because otherwise I have no way of contacting you. And um, yeah, so she, I was able to get a hold of Lynette and now they're sending her out her October kit. But this month we have one of the January kits. So it'll have all the things that you saw in the main kits, not the add-on kit, cause that's an extra. Um, but yeah, so we'll have a winner for that. Let me, let me just do this for a second. Winner! 
better. Okay, I'm back. So yeah, we're gonna draw a winner of a kit um, from everyone that is here right now. If you win, you will need to email me so that I know that you won. Oh, we're small today. There's only 34. I'm one of them. So you get a chance out of 33, which is um, really good. <laughs> Uh, let's see, here's um, random number generator. Number generator. Okay, here we go. Out of 33, generate 16. Okay, that means I had a count. <laughs> And our winner is Kimberly Herring. Kimberly Herring, congratulations. You are our winner. So you will receive a kit from the scrap room. I do want you to send me an email. You can just send it to support at scraphappy.org and um, just let Joe, because Joe sees them, just let Joe know that you're the scrap, um, Scrapbook Live winner for January. And we will get you hooked up. And I will write this into my planner right now so that I know who it is. There. So congratulations to Kimberly. Uh, what kind of planner do I have? I I'm so excited because it just finally came when I was waiting and waiting. Um, I'm using a half, happy planner. So this is the happy Pat planner classic with vertical um, stuff. This is it's so pretty. It's actually really reminded me of the Heidi Swap collection. What was it? Was it her Magnolia collection or the one that came after it? She had a collection that had these beautiful Hawthorne. Thank you, Deborah. I'm like, it's not, that's not the right one. I got a Hawthorne collection. It looks just like her Hawthorne collection. It is so beautiful. And then I like to kind of, you know, it's your planner. You got to kind of pimp your planner a little bit, right? So what I have, what I do, my old one is here. I kind of show you. Um, I actually add, this is my one from last year. It's very, very thick. And that's with most of the months removed. So the months that go by, I actually remove and I add them to a clip and stuff. But in the beginning, I add extra um, tabs with all of the different projects that we have going on for Scrap Happy stuff. So um, yeah, I have membership stuff, notes that I take from live events, go into here, podcast stuff. Um, to anybody that has been um, pa patiently, patiently waiting, I'm happy to say podcast is back on track. The first episode of 2022 came out this week. It is an interview with Adam Westwood from a Scrappy Adam and Dottie about Flair. So super fun to talk to Adam. He is actually one of the teachers that we have for the upcoming Scrap Smarter experience. And so I was really excited to have him come onto the podcast so I could introduce him to a few people and we can all get to know him a little bit better because I don't know him that well either. So it was uh, fun to do. <laughs> Best as I liked the Adam Westwood interview. Thank you. Yeah, I love Happy Planner. One of the things that really made a difference for me was getting one of the hole punches so I could punch my own papers to fit into the planner. I don't like planners that have a um, a fixed binding so that because I need to be able to put my own stuff in it and I'm not going to tape it all in. This is not. <laughs> Oh, Bencine says not to hijack anything, but celebration is happening now. So you earn free products with every $50 that you buy. Contact your local demonstrator or her. Just contact her. She's here <laughs> unless you have one. Um, they don't have a 12 by 12 paper in basic black, only eight and a half by 11. Only the white and vanilla and multi-packs are the 12 by 12. Thanks. Thanks for letting me know because, oh man, do I wish they had, because their black is so good. <laughs> And they're red, actually. <laughs> they're black and they're red. Um, can't beat the ones from Stampin' Up, actually. <laughs> so, um, yeah. The Golden Girls was Kindred stamps, I think. I'm pretty sure these were Kindred. 
anybody that recognizes i'm pretty sure that looks like their characters yeah so i'm getting the punch if you go happy planner get the punch um, I didn't know if I would want to eventually go to a memory planner. So they have bigger ones that are more like eight and a half by 11 size paper. Um, I think that's the size of them. These ones are smaller. So the paper inside is actually seven by nine and a quarter. And so when I cut down my papers to that size, that's the size. Yeah, so Shannon's got the larger one. So if you get the larger, the pink um, hole punch, it can do the ones for these, or it can do the ones for the memory planner. And you know, I've, I've been tempted. <laughs> I've been tempted to do that as well. So I haven't actually done one of those ones, but this is my third year in one of these planners, a happy planner. I didn't know that I would like it, but I have really liked it. So why now this is my second year to use a happy planner best planner ever i got the punch too so that i can add school and sports schedules into the planner and all the other information i need to keep yeah um i yeah i really love this i i like to keep some highlighters handy last year i was using the mouth the mild liners but i found that they were they had a tendency to bleed <laughs> So I'm very anti-bleeding personally and in my markers and pens. So um, yeah, so we have these new ones that I'm work I'm playing with right now. They're from Bic and they are um, they're called Brightliner Grip, but they're a pastel highlighter. So that is what they look like. Um, so far, I quite like them. The colors are less in your face than a fluorescent highlighter and that's what I like so it's a little bit nicer going into the book I'm not 100% sure that I love those ones so I'm also playing with another new one to me I have I have more colors here on my desk um so I'm also playing with these ones so then I'll be able to know which ones I like better uh these are the sharpie s note creative markers and they are like a highlighter that is also not so bright so not sure which one as I throw them around which one I like more yet but I I will see and kind of see what pens they kind of work best with so I'm playing but between those two I'm quite happy and I think that they bleed less than the mild liners but the mild liners are pretty fun they come in some pretty great fun colors these are two of the new ones I picked up as well so yeah, really fun to get some I don't know it's a highlighter but you know it's just a marker but I like them <laughs> Alice could you add the information for the highlighters in the black pen that you showed here that don't bleed yes so yeah the I actually have two pens that I quite like um one of them are these Copic multi-liner so uh, yeah, Copic multi-liner. Um, if you go to my, okay, let's see here. I'll just open this up. Um, so I'm pretty sure that I included that right here. I'm, I know I'm not sharing yet. I'm just making sure that I've opened it up right. Um, yeah, I do have it. So how, uh, um, I'll do a quick little screen share and I'll show you. So I made a page. If you go to scraphappy.org slash faves, F-A-V-E-S. We were talking about the faves. So Alice's faves. And um, so F-A-V-E-S. This is um, where I kind of list some of my favorite products because I get asked about them from time to time. So I'm working on the page so I can add little quick links through the page to kind of scroll you to the right part but I've got the trimmers that I like to use the albums that I have behind me on my shelf because I get asked about those um, some of the stuff that I like mixed media things that I really um, find helpful adhesive stamps and ink embossing alphas that I quite like using pens and markers so a lot of these things are linked to my affiliate stuff 
if you don't want just Google search it, I've listed what they're called. So if you don't want to use affiliate links, that's fine. But otherwise they are listed to, and I tell you where it's going to take you. Um, so those, the pens, so the Copic multi-liner pens, um, I found them at a cherry on top. So I was really excited about that because I had to order them from jet pens before. And for me, they don't ship to Canada. So that was complicated. I had to have them sent to a friend who has sent them to me, which is, you know, it's like, send them to Canada. Come on. <laughs> okay. um, Sarasa, the Mark on Zebra pen. So this is another pen that I like to use. Um, and they're uh, a bleed free pen. And like, in my opinion, they're really good for that. These Sharpie S note creative markers. These are the new ones that I am using. I haven't put, added the big ones on here yet, but so far I've seen that they're not smearing most of the inks. So I have the information about the printer that I use and a couple of the organization things, the stress oxide. And of course, this is the little comparison chart that I made when they came up with the brand new salvage patina so you could see how it compared to the other blues. So there you go, some just random me things <laughs> that we'll see today. Um, but yeah, I, I put that together so that it's easy to find because I know that um, I get asked. And if you're in our membership, if you um, go into the circle, actually anybody can come and join our circle if you sign up for some of the stuff. When you go to the side, there's links down at the bottom um, on the menu side at the very bottom, there is a link there to my faves as well too. So if you're ever looking, you're like, what is that pen called again? <laughs> That's where I'm putting them. So yeah, I will decide which of these I prefer, whether I prefer the Sharpie ones. I was using the Sharpie ones first and now I'm trying these big ones. So yeah, I color code all the stuff in my planner book so that I know kind of at a glance, some of the stuff that's coming up on the calendar. And then my planners are not necessarily pretty planners. Um, when I do get new stamps and stuff, however, I do go in and I'll turn back to other months and then I'll stamp stuff or the weekly spreads and I'll stamp stuff and test new stamps that I get excited about. Um, I'll test them in planners. So I wouldn't say mine is a planned planner. They're more like a Hey, look, you got work to do planner. <laughs> so, so that's a thing. Also, I really like um, having little check boxes or something. So I got this from the happy planner. I'm not that happy with it, actually. It's not the right size. Like you can do each of these things, but they don't line up properly with their windows. I think it's badly designed. It came as a two pack with another one, which is also badly designed. So I don't understand. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it was for some different product that they had, but I really like having templates to do stuff. So I kind of made my own little template. Can you see? How can I put this up? Uh, here. So I made my own little template with little holes in it that I've punched. They're almost straight. I tried hard. They're almost straight. But for me, then I can just kind of color in the little sections or trace the little sections and I can have those in my planner and they fit one of the little boxes. So yeah, <laughs> I don't overthink it. Not at all, <laughs> not at all. Okay, so that's fun, uh, fun stuff, planner things. Um, this year I did choose a word for myself and I'll have a video out about, well, I have a little video that I'm making about it. Um, my word that I chose is the word content because I want to be more satisfied with what I am, what I have and who I am. And it's about being satisfied, but I will tell you guys, I I'm writing this out and I'm trying to use some nice writing, right? It's um, something I've worked on over the years. I'm not great at it, but it, you know, it looks okay. <laughs> but I wrote it and I'm like, oh, that's not very good. So then I wrote it and I'm like, oh, that's not very good. Oh, that, that's a little crooked. And this is a little this, and that's a little this. And so I'm writing this out and I'm, you know, doing all these sheets. 
and then I'm sitting there and like it's like my my mind just went so who really needs this word <laughs> to be satisfied and content with what I have after I have done this thing how many times <laughs> maybe this word came to me for a reason <laughs> And then my son says, oh, your word is content. Hey, yeah, you need to put more stuff on your social media. So I'm like, double meaning. <laughs> it's built right in. <laughs> so yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> but yeah, super fun. And gratitude. Yeah. So I am putting together a little, a little video for my TikTok with this because I think it'll be it's it, it'll be funny and I think most people won't even see the difference between them which will make that even funnier it's kind of like <laughs> the inside joke <laughs> um yeah okay should we try one of these we'll we'll experiment and try I'm sure we can look up real directions now that you know we know what it's called a triple cube pop-up or something <laughs> but um but I'm happy just to measure because I think I think it looks simple like to me my brain says this isn't that hard. <laughs> we'll see what that looks like. Um, I've got my um, my my trimmer, and I have a bone folder. I don't have one of those fancy ones now. Who here has upgraded to the fancy bone folder? Because I heard they're amazing, and I keep almost wanting to get one. And then I look at the price, and I'm like, for a bone folder. <laughs> I just can't get over it. I have fancy bone folder. Okay. Um, they're silicone or something like they're. So when you press along your seams, they, they glide amazing, like way better than just my regular one that I've had for a million years from close to my heart. Um, so they glide way better, but they also won't make it shiny. So, you know, if you're like pressing that seam and it sometimes makes it a little shiny, Teflon, thank you. I'm like silicone or something. Vicky says they're Teflon. She says they are amazing. I love mine. And Andy said Teflon. Yeah, so Teflon bone folder. I don't know, is this a thing? Should I upgrade it? <laughs> Do I need an upgraded bone folder? Maybe, maybe I don't fold enough stuff. Okay. Um, also love mine there you go so the people that have them say they're worth it so they're telling me they're worth it okay so this box here is me with my t-square um one and three quarters so one and three quarters plus one and three quarters. I need a scratch paper so that I can do math. <laughs> Alice, I did the math already. Oh, you've already done oh. Okay, I'll just write it down. <laughs> but somebody should check it. I'm an English person, not a math person. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the tall part is 7.25 by one and three quarters, so three and 0.5, 5.25 and seven. Okay, so we're gonna score at 1.75, 3.5, 5.25 and seven. Okay, okay, we're gonna make one of these things. It's gonna be fun. And I'm gonna bring you back to see what I'm doing and we'll see if I'm doing this right. Okay, here we go. So content, content. I was not content. <laughs> okay, so this, she said 7.25. I think this might be tall enough. Oh, yes. Okay, so then I need to make it seven inches long. The, con <laughs> the content of her writing does not make her content. I know. <laughs> so bad. Vicky said she's got to go. Okay. All good. So we're going to make this scored at one and oh, I'll cut it right down to size for seven and two. Oh, that's the one that's like missing on this thing. Okay. So we're going to score it at one 
and three quarters. This feels really tall. Mine is not that tall. Yeah, I think it's about 3.25 tall. Okay. If I measured right. I feel like the, whoever you got it from, I feel like we made the same one. Probably. Okay, and so the next score line was at 3.5. That makes math sense. That's good. We're doing good so far. Okay, but I need to go 1.75 from my fold. <laughs> I'm thinking. Okay, let's store that. It's going to be too long, but it's going to work for my other little boxes. So, uh -huh. and this is not following my track very well. Struggle, the struggle is real. Maybe I do need to fancy your bone folder, y'all. <laughs> and And then I need a little lip, right? That's why we get an extra little bit so we can seal it. They've got what, a quarter inch in there? Something like that. I don't really need to score that one. I need to trim that one. All right. So this makes a cube now that I have Okay. So the height was I already forgot three three and a quarter. Oh, I think this one's is yours taller? Yeah, this one's three and a half. So I'll just do what my sample is because I, I think so, because I think that sounds right, because I think I probably measured wrong because my cubes were taller, so and they go halfway, right? I've got the same height as my cube, so I've got mm -hmm. this top piece here. Oh, yeah, mine's three and a half. Okay. See, I'm not a math person. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got open cube at the top and these cubes open on the sides right oh look and she's got like cute little decoration inside the cubes and everything so that when it's sitting there it looks all pretty sorry if it's sitting there there <laughs> let's figure out how to hold it <laughs> there we go but then so this will just go together like this and then as it folds down, it's going to fold down flat. So I'm just going to tape that, I think, right now, right? That looks like what I should do. I'm using my, my tape totally because I'm not out of tape runner or anything like that. <laughs> but because it sticks the best. <laughs> and There we go. So here's my little back cube. Perfect. And then I think with the cubes, if you just make a, a strip that's 1.75 tall by the 7.25 long, then you score at the exact same places that we did before. Yeah, so I don't think that this piece is worth two of them right yeah but it just needs to be 1.75 tall because then it's half of the 3.5 tall rectangle okay 1.75 so i've got this just a little bit too wide then so 1.75 yeah. and i'll trim the oh that's two <laughs> Like that doesn't look right. Always look and use your brain for half a second before you cut. <laughs> there we go. And now, are these the same size? No, because I've got this one a little bit bigger. So I'm going to cut that one to the same size as that one. 
And so all my scoring should be done, I think, right? Yeah, and you just made yours a little smaller, so it's like not an exact square, right? Like by trimming those down a little bit. Yeah. But it doesn't really matter. Yeah, these match my sample that I have, so. <laughs> Perfect. I think we're good, as long as they're matching my sample. So that wasn't too bad. I've got the scored pieces that work pretty quick. And then it looks like I just put the cubes together and then we just glued the cubes onto the rectangle. Onto the rectangle. Yeah. Guys, this is manageable. This is doable. I can do this. <laughs> yeah, I remember it not being hard. Okay, I'll shut up now. He's here to give me all my directions with sizes. So that's great too. <laughs> I think that seeing something like this and then trying it, I think that's you know, I think that's one of the things that we need to do sometimes, because what's the worst that happens? We mess it up and we're like, oh, I have to grab another piece of paper, <laughs> right? But sometimes we just take scrapbooking and crafting and all this stuff so seriously. And really, we're playing with paper. It's, it's all good. It's all good. Uh, yes. Ink Road has the Betty White. Oh, a Betty White set. I didn't realize they had a Betty White set. I haven't been paying attention to my emails for them. I need to be looking. She was probably getting that ready beforehand anyways because of her 100th birthday coming up. Okay, so now I've got these cubes and I just stick these cubes onto this cube. And then of course you can decorate it all up and stuff. But this looks pretty great, guys. All okay. right, I'm gonna take this and put some adhesive on here. Some adhesive on here. And then I think it's going to be good. Hey, so yeah, this has been fun. So what has everybody else been working on while we've been playing around here and learning how to make cool card boxes and stuff? Has anybody made something cool? We'll have to uh, check this out. Okay, we've got this here. Sure, somebody has made something cool. Beth, are you creating? Or are you working? Debbie, you look like you're in your creative zone. Heather might be doing homework, maybe creating. She's not, she's not doing homework. She's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. I think I did it. I think I win. I won the internet, y'all. <laughs> but here we go. This right here. Looks pretty good. Look at me doing it and all. That wasn't too hard at all, even. What did, I only scored once because we cut that paper to the right size that first time. So that made it a, definitely a lot easier if you score it to the right size right from the beginning. So, and then you just cut the little pieces and you decorate each of your squares. Well, that was fun. You guys wanna see something else that I've been working on? <laughs> yeah, I like how you can mail it flat, right? So you fold it down, and you can throw that into an envelope, and then it's pretty easy to see that it sits up when when they get it. So yeah, that's a good one because lots of fun designs are too bulky to just actually pop into the mail. Okay. So fun thing, I just released a video on my YouTube channel today. It is part of a collaboration that I did with Shu Wen. She is the creative person behind Shoe Puff Creations. And she's one of our Scrap Smarter Experience instructors. And she's do, she was doing a YouTube hop today inspired by stamping. And so <laughs> inspired. 
<laughs> and so this is the layout that I created sharing multiple stamping techniques. Um, it's part of her series called Stretch Your Stamps. So she releases a little hop each month where she invites a couple of creators to join her for a hop and they talk about stretching your stamps in different ways. This one was more about um, backgrounds, stamping backgrounds and creative backgrounds. And so for this one, I have stamped my stripe paper. I have stamped my floral paper. I have stamped my little mini um, floral paper. I have stamped my title. I have stamped my embellishments and I have stamped this background piece behind the photo. So lots of fun techniques that I used on this one using stamps from Altenew and Concord and Nine. And then um, yeah, putting that all together. Oh, and I stamped my little own cutoff paper strip as well. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's one more thing. So yeah, lots of fun putting that together and showcasing the techniques. I, um, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this one. Plus, this was uh, kind of all bringing everything together. It feels like everything is coming together. My friend had texted me a picture with Teresa Collins the other day, and I said, I have not scrapbooked that picture of us yet. So this is my friend Tracy. We're friends from high school and myself with Teresa Collins. And she is going to be the keynote speaker for the Scrap Smarter Experience. So everything just kind of all came together. I matched the, the papers that I used here kind of inspired from the color of Teresa's shirt and the florals from Tracy's shirt to kind of bring all of that together. Of course, my shirt is like crazy in pattern because you know, that's, that's my way. <laughs> so, so yeah, I love how it kind of came together. I did my journaling on some vellum and oh, here's like a little secret thing. Actually, I didn't even put this in the video because I didn't um, have that. When I do my journaling on vellum, lots of times I layer two layers of vellum to get just the right amount of um, translucency. <laughs> Is that a real word? Trans <laughs> Translucence? The, ra the right amount of see throughness <laughs> So um, that's, a, that's a thing. So that video is up and fresh on my YouTube. And then in the description below it, you can hop to the other creators that were part of this. There's just a few. So it's not like tons and tons, but there's just a few of us that were together for this. And being that I haven't released a YouTube video for a while, it felt like a really good thing to be part of. <laughs> because sometimes uh, I don't post as much stuff on my YouTube as I would like to, but that was a fun one to really get me playing with my stuff and uh, yeah, a lot of fun. Anyways, this was my page from today. I love it. Like, look at how that mixed media just kind of made that page be like, done. <laughs> like totally cheating, but I'll take it. <laughs> and uh, a lot of fun. Yeah, Lionel says, I just finished stamping my daily have to list on all of my happy planner daily pages with my custom self inking stamp. <gasps> oh, I check off each item each day to be sure I've done them. That's a pretty good one. You know, if you get that custom stamped and just go, ploop, 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 you don't even have to ink it up. Yep. I love using those in my office. I've had the same page stamp. And it, it ran out of ink. And of course, you know, I came upstairs to my scrapbook room and got my little refills and filled that baby up. I've used it for, I don't know, 20 years. When that thing breaks, you know, it will have done its time, <laughs> but, but I will miss it. <laughs> they keep trying to convince me that everything should go onto computers and you don't need all the papers. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Turns out that um, it works for me about as well with scrapbooking as it does in my office. <laughs> okay, anybody want to do some show and tell? Ooh, Beth's working on her Christmas in January layout. Yay. And so that's really fun. Yeah, we've got uh, a bunch of stuff happening for that. Okay, I'm not seeing, oh, Debbie, can I put you up on screen? I'm gonna add a spotlight. Look at her, she's got her hoodie. Yay, 
Yay. She's got her scrap happy hoodie. That's fun. Kimberly, make sure you sent me the email, okay? Because you, you won. So make sure you send me your email. Oh, it looks beautiful. I can't hear you because you're not on, you're not unmuted. It's warm and snuggly. <laughs> I, I and I'm going to a crop and they're gonna all be pea green with jealousy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm really happy the, the hoodie like and my I've washed mine a few times now. So, you know, when you're still happy with it after you've washed it, that's a good sign. <laughs> that was that was one of my wor my biggest worries with trying to do some stuff. Um, any scrap happy members that are looking for any of the merch stuff that we set up, we tried to make it as affordable as possible. Like I work with a company that prints it on demand, so they make what you order. Um, and then I don't have to sit on inventory and you don't have to wait for me to mail anything because they just take care of that. So that's, yeah, that's really good. Uh, there we go. Yeah, so that's really good. I like it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with mine a lot. I pull it out quite a bit, especially with the weather we've been having lately. It's been too, too ridiculously cold. So there's that. The podcast is out. I'm trying to like tell you all the cool things that have been happening lately. I got interviewed on a few podcasts, actually a few. And I say that because I was interviewed on um, three podcasts <laughs> in the last couple of months. Um, so I was a guest on the Artistically You podcast. Um, can I pull that up really quick? So it is by my friend Jana Oliveira, and we talked about scrapbooking as an art form and how that kind of fits into an artist's lifestyle, I guess. Coming back to Clubhouse next Wednesday, Christina and I chatted. We couldn't pull it together for this week, but we'll be back on Clubhouse next Wednesday. Um, we, we meet at it's 12 p.m. my time. So 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on Clubhouse on Wednesdays. So yes, we will be back as of next week. So yeah, Artistically You podcast with Jenna Oliveira. Um, let's pop this up. Right there, is this the right one? No, oh, this is the one. All right, so this is what the podcast looks like. It has like her little um, painterly background and that's Jana. And so it was one of her episodes here in December telling stories with Alice Bull. So we talked all about storytelling. We, we kind of got into everything. It was like, <laughs> it was a good hangout session. And then I was also a guest on the Wander Mom podcast. Um, Hmm, I don't know if this will show up here. Wander Mom Diaries. Oh. Wander Mom. Sorry. We'll see if this actually works. Oh no, I'm not trying to open that. Okay, so let me stop that for a second and see if I can find it. <laughs> and this was a fun one because it was chatting with a mom that has young kids and she likes to do some traveling obviously that's an issue issue right now um but yeah that was really fun to kind of have that different focus and so we kind of talked about how you dive into scrapbooking and kind of what your purposes are behind your scrapbooking so that one looks like this and it's called the Wander Mom Diaries podcast. So we talked right here on the 17th of December, scrapbooking your adventures. <laughs> so we did a bonus episode for her podcast. And um, yeah, super fun um, episode to kind of chat about it. And if you've ever felt overwhelmed with scrapbooking, like you just kind of don't feel like you're on top of it. This might be a good one to listen to because we really talk about 
how you can find scrapbooking, um, find a way to do scrapbooking and fit memory keeping into your life. Even, you know, if you're a mom of toddlers or, you know, kind of living a busy lifestyle. So that was something that we talked about on there. And then recently, um, uh, I was just on another one. Um, Artful Adventures. Um, it's just opening um, there. So here is. So this is Artful Adventures podcast, and I did an episode with Christy where we talked about how we play with scrapbooking, memory keeping, art. Christy and I have been friends for a long time. She's the first person that I met online. It's one of my first online friends that I met. You know, when you go and you're like, I'm going to hang up with my online friends and your family looks at you like you're crazy. She was the gal I was staying with. <laughs> so um yeah, so we had a fun conversation that kind of led us into so many different ways that we bring scrapbooking into our life. So yeah, three different podcasts that I've been so fortunate to be part of recently. Um, I know there was a little, um, I, I received a few emails and actually it was so touching to receive the messages and emails asking if the podcast was going to return the Scrap Happier podcast. And so yeah, I was happy to chat with Adam about his. So there's all kinds of fun podcast stuff and we're coming back, Christina and I are coming back to um, Clubhouse next, starting next Wednesday. So, so many different ways that we can hang out and have fun together. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, quite else I love the hoodie mainly because you don't have to pull it over your head. I hate putting hoodies over my head. I know that, I know. <laughs> I, Heather's like, what? <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I just hate it. It's like, you know, hair <laughs> and winter and static. So put those three words together, hair, winter, and static. And you'd be understanding why I don't put hoodies over my head. <laughs> like, the static here right now is real. You can actually see a little bit of hair already being static because I touched it. <laughs> it's just that bad. <laughs> Yeah, my my scarf that I have right now is so cute, is beautiful, but man, does it ever make my hair staticky? So lots of times I have a hard time even putting my scarf. I'll, I'll hang it over the edge of my coat, and I'm like, hmm, that's not keeping me very warm. <laughs> Heather says she's been working on her December Traveler's Notebook. It's so fun. Yeah, so hopefully there's um, yeah, there's lots of fun things coming up. If you aren't signed up for the Scrap Smarter Experience. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Um, you don't have to sign up. Um, Scrap Happy members do have a special discount as part of your membership. You get special discount access to the event. So um, if you go to the Scrap Happy site and you're logged in under the word Scrap Happy, Scrap Smarter Experience in the menu, it will say member discount. You have to be logged into your account for members there. Um, let's just this so yeah so when you go to the scrap smart experience you'll see the member discount for members um early bird has finished but if you're watching this you can still save five dollars off of the um entry and and that is um use code alice 221 actually all of our teachers have their own code like that so you know it helps them out because we set it up so that um as they help to promote the event, I get to help them out as well. So it's um, it's good to bring all of them in. Um, we do have uh, registration now open. And I was so, so pleased to announce that Teresa Collins would be our keynote speaker for this event. I had the chance, like you saw the, the page that I showed just recently meeting Teresa Collins when my friend Tracy and I had gone down to Park City, Utah, we went to an event that she hosted. It was actually a, 
a two a double event not two for one but for two for one traveling for us but um it was two different events that she hosted and one was uh live your story and the other was create your story and so the live your story was actually a personal development workshop she brought in different instructors or keynotes or different speakers that would help us kind of find what our passion was if that was something that we didn't know to help us kind of live you know a life that really makes us feel alive I guess and so um, I left that event knowing that I was ready to kind of go out and and do good things and this was in the fall of 2019. <laughs> so, you know, that has all kinds of um, implications after that. But I look at, um, I really felt like I took things more seriously in the things, in the pursuit of my dreams after that point. And I can put a lot of that into the messages that. Teresa shared and the speakers that she brought together had shared at her event. And so I found it a very powerful event. And then when that one was over, we stayed there for her next event, which was the create your story. And that was a scrapbooking and crafting and creativity event. And so of course that was super fun. And that was also where I was introduced to my first happy planner, which was a Teresa Collins collab with happy planners so it was this beautifully designed <laughs> Teresa collins style happy planner um also at this event we have 10 teachers laura wanzik sandy reversky shuen tam and she's the one that i just did the youtube hop with uh becky adams christine meyer jennifer edwardson janet from rts she's uh she's always been such a great supporter and her class from the last scrap smarter experience it kind of blew my mind because she talked all about scrapbooking stories that don't have pictures and then she also kind of used that opportunity to not only tell these stories that don't have pictures but she also took those papers that people struggle with the most the ones that are really scenic and graphic and they're like a whole setting or something and you're like where does my picture even go and then she had us turn them into scrapbook pages and you're like obviously i didn't even need a picture this paper is all i needed and it was just amazing um we have jenny mcgarvey adam westwood and may flom so i am thrilled about this lineup of teachers um there is a page where you can get more information about the teachers um i don't think it'll let me share that through here let me see here when you click the registration page and then you go to the bottom of the registration page you can open up the learn more about the instructors and there's all the information um, about the classes and actually i have the last of the information i need to add about that so i'll get that added here today so let me go back to a screen share again and i'll show you this part so here we've added um, all the information about the teachers. We got info about our keynote speaker. Uh, Teresa Collins actually has a book. So if you're the kind of person that's like, Alice, I need homework. I need to prep for this event. Um, you know, I always design, like the events aren't designed to really have like pre-homework. They're designed to like learn cool stuff in a class and then use those new skills. But if you wanted something, then I would recommend that you get Teresa's book. And I'm trying to, I had it, I don't want to read it. Okay, I was gonna say, I have her book. It's so good. Um, it, you know, trigger warning, she talks about um, abuse, neglect. She talks about divorce. She talks about being widowed. Like there's, She's had some trauma, right? There's been trauma in her life. And so she really has taken things that have been struggles and to turn that around. And she really has talked about that and, you know, become an amazing professional businesswoman that also has a beautiful relationship. So um, it's been 
really, yeah, she's quite the inspiration. And then we have our creative classes. So um, I've got each of the teachers linked here. So it'll just like scroll you down to each teacher. So if there's somebody that you don't know or want to learn about, each one is listed here with their information. Actually, I have Sandy's information. It's about stencils. I know that it's about stencils, so I'll have that added. But I'm like, please do mixed media for us. <laughs> um, and Shuen interactive elements. Um, if you want like almost like a sneak peek of what she will bring to the table, check out some of the fun stuff she put into her December daily project. <laughs> it's like, I want to touch it. I want to move it. I want to play with it. It's so fun. And she's so good with that. Uh, Becky Adams is going to be helping us make the most of our dives so that we can do that. Christine is going to help us manage our time. So the number one reason I hear from people that they're not doing their scrapbooking is because they don't have enough time to scrapbook. And so she's going to talk to us about scrapbooking when you have no time. And she's a mom of four that homeschools and runs a business. So, you know, she, she kind of knows. <laughs> she kind of knows. Oh, I forgot to mention. Um, Laura Wansick, limit yourself. So she talks in this class about limiting your supplies to have more creativity. And I have just shared in my Insta stories, I've been reposting some of her posts because she's given a couple little sneak peeks. I think she's going to be showing, I don't know, 10, probably more than 10 different projects. Like, I think she made eight yesterday and she said she had another six today just for her class content. And it's all about getting all of this done. And she does that through her system. So she's going to be sharing that with us during this event. Jennifer Edwardson, she actually is a business store owner. And she is going to be helping us with sketches and storytelling. Uh, Janet. Oh, I know Janet's class too. I need to put that in there. Okay. <laughs> I'll post Janet's class. Um, and Jenny McGarvey, memory, memory planning and paper crafting. She does a lot of stuff with journals, like with notebooks, um, with planners. And so we're going to bring a little bit of that perspective to our scrapbooking uh, Adam is going to introduce us to the concept of scrapping backwards. Basically, we're going to look at our products and our embellishments and clusters and then turn that into scrapbook pages, which is a totally backwards concept to kind of anywhere that I've started with scrapbooking before. So I'm excited to see this. He's been doing this as a series for a, quite a while with our scrap happy friend, Scrappy Kathy, Kathy McElfresh. And um, he's going to bring this concept to us and introduce us to it. So I'm really excited. Um, and then May Flom, she's going to bring us some scraps and stitches. And she says, what can you do with ephemera, ticket stubs, business cards, and the in inevitable scraps of paper we wind up with as scrapbookers? So if you've ever felt like you're bad for leaving out some of the things that you collect and save, then she's going to give us some fun ways to make sure that we get that stuff included into our pages as we go through this. So it's going to be a fun uh, lineup of teachers and classes. I can't wait to, to share all of it um, and to actually like, get to see everybody's classes too. <laughs> like very self-serving moment when I put this together. I'm like, oh, what does she do with this? And how does she do that? Or how does he do that, right? That's very much how I go about. Like, I look at people that are inspiring me with the stuff that they're creating. And that's who I try to bring to the event. So I'm very excited. Um, yeah, so if you're not a member, um, then you can sign up outside of membership and that's fine. Save your five bucks, use Alice221 for your code. Just go to scraphappy.org. You'll see the, the link right there to scroll down. You'll see the, the big image of everybody. And if you're a member, then you have your own special thing. Yes, Bonnie member coupon doesn't expire. So as long as you sign up before the event, you're good. <laughs> we made it like that because I know that it's um, chaos. Oh, I just signed up. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited. 
I, I really, I love these events for me, learning new skills and trying new things is one of the best things about scrapbooking. I try to bring some of that to all of the scrapbooking that I do, whether it's you know, hey, let's learn how to make a little thing because I just, you know, that just seemed like a fun idea. Um, I love the products. I love getting to play with them. I love telling my stories on pages. I love the whole design thing. So every little element from scrapbooking, I think, comes together for such a fun and rich thing as we document stuff about our life and what we're thinking and what we're feeling. And yeah, I just love it. So um, that's what this whole event is going to be about. So lots of fun stuff. Um, anyways, it is time for me to wrap this up. Thank you so much, everyone, for hanging out with me today. Um, we didn't do show and tell, so I feel bad about that because I would love to see what everybody else is up to. But we did make a bonus project. <laughs> that was super fun. Uh, oh, yeah. Bonnie says, thanks for introducing Christina Sorge to us. I'm a big fan of hers. I believe, yeah, probably we, she taught at um, two of the, our events through that. And she's the person that I do the clubhouse chats with. So come and join us on Wednesday. Yeah, so much creativity. Oh, and even before that, she came and did, um, she taught classes at our event. Yeah, the event that we did in Colorado. She was our instructor that we brought in for that event. So, so much fun. So thank you. Thank you everybody for joining me. Hopefully I left you with something fun or inspiring, or, you know, at least you had a laugh, got to see my fish, you know, whatever it was for the day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Patty says, thanks Alice. Great content today. <laughs> You're succeeding with your word already. Yes. Yeah, she forgot. She's like, I I've forgotten that I was in Colorado. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> so fun. Yeah, no, it's, it's been, it's, you know, the people that I meet through scrapbooking have made my world so much better. And that includes all of you that are here today. So thank you. And if you're catching the replay, that's you too. So, you know, sign up for the email so that you get the notifications. There's actually a free calendar. If you go to scraphappy.org and look at the free, there's a calendar you should subscribe to just to take part of the free events. If, you know, joining membership or doing that isn't part of your life right now, but you wanna do the, the free events those get added to the free calendar. So you can subscribe to that one too. And members, we have a calendar that you can subscribe to with all of the member stuff on it. So there's options. Okay. Well, thanks everyone. I'll talk to you soon. And uh, yeah, next week we have, I think two events going on. So it's good stuff coming up. Okay. Bye everyone.